For staying with Sharad and I on, consider this. Our guest tonight is Dato Sri uh, Nancy Shukri, Minister of Tourism, Arts and Culture, also MP for Batang Sadong. Now, uh, Dato Sri, the Visit Malaysia Year 2020 campaign has been cancelled, uh, as I understand it, due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Yeah. And instead, the, there will be now um, more emphasis on domestic tourism or right. Chiti Chiti Malaysia. You pointed that out earlier in the uh, interview. Now, I'm wondering whether um, this pivot to domestic tourism is going to be enough to fill the gap that is left um, from without having international tourists? Well, uh, I'd like to thank you for this question. I think this is um, the, the most common uh, matter that we have been discussing even internationally. Now, we have to bear in mind that tourism, tourists from outside will not be coming over to Malaysia yet. Neither will we be going out because they are also looking into domestic domestic tourism. So therefore, there are a lot of things in the country itself, in our own country, in our kampong or in our district, have not been um, explored by us. So that's why we are considering, we are looking and also um, encouraging even tour operators to look into domestic tourism. And there are a lot of things. When you talk about domestic tourism, again, you're talking, just now Sharab was asking me about, um, about um, um, musical, um, those in the music industry, there are people in the music industry in the in the in the rural areas. So we we are looking into rural tourism. For to rural tourism, you have a lot of things. You have you can talk about the ethnic communities in certain um, in certain states. Uh, you can see uh, their their culture, their how how each each culture is being practiced among themselves. This not not many people know. And then you can also uh, look into personalities, personalities who have been leaving legacies for their country, and also for their for their um, uh, for for their states. Okay, so yep. previously, mm -hmm. that was through, you know the positioning of um, visit tourism Malaysia or Malaysia's tourism campaigns has often been to promote Malaysia as this uh, tourist destination to to overseas tourists, right? What is it that domestic tourists want? Oh, you're talking. Oh, you're asking. What is the domestic? Yeah. What? What? Oh, how will? How that, will you promote I, I, domestic tourism to Malaysians yeah. who are so familiar already with our our culture? No, not many people know. You'll be you'll be surprised because some people may want to know. This is going to rebuild our own domestic tourism, which will be and the end result will be this is going to be the destination for the foreign tourists later. You know when when we talk about. Um, uh, one one spot in one rural area, which nobody knew until you, nobody ever knew about it until somebody um, introduced this new place. For example, a waterfall with people never even knew about it because it is within the the the, the land that belongs to a person. Uh, it's an individual private land. So unless somebody brings you there, introduce you to this place, otherwise nobody knows about it. And people talking about this, um, this the culture of this particular ethnic group, and uh, why they, they their food, their the kind of food that they, they prepare for themselves, which is very special, and then um, they have homestays here, and then beautiful place there, the greens there. A lot of us we don't even know about it. I am I'm telling you this because I am from Kuching and I am a, 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 an MP in Batang Sadong. I'm not from Batang Sadong, but that taught me a lot of things because by me being there, I learned about a lot of things that many people don't know. Let alone if you talk about going to Mulu, not many people know even about Mulu. Uh, Dr. Sri, okay. I've actually been to Mulu, <laughs> doing, uh, stayed not, at, you know, at the resort for the Mulu Caves and explored it. I love it. It's beautiful. Exactly. And but I how many ask people this question. I? How many, <laughs> you know, I how love many people knows it? Yeah, they, and they should. More people from the peninsula at least should go. And I want to ask you that question, which is the free flow of uh, between East Malaysia and uh, West Malaysia. Will there be specific problems when it comes to that border? We're talking about international border, we're talking about domestic borders that are also regulated. What's your concern? Is Sarawak state government concerned about a lot of people from the peninsula coming over? Uh, when the MCO ends and when things are freed up? 
Well, if it is still MCO, of course it has. We have to comply with not just our government. It comes under the 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 procedure that's established by the uh, by the health department, which we have to stand guided by them. We have to listen to them because they are the experts. Um, but by by the time when MCO is lifted, I'm sure everything is open. But I think there will be a new culture, a new culture that will be existing that is what people used to nowadays we hear we hear about the new norm so the new norm will be we must make sure that this place is clean hygiene hygienic uh, uh, practices you know and then people will be still will be uh, distancing social uh, uh, they, they will be uh, having this social distancing to be in place all the time mm. um, and one thing uh, we must remember that uh, people will we will we will have confidence. People will have confidence in us. On that note about yeah. confidence, I mean, I can imagine that there will still be a lot of uncertainty, a lot of perhaps uh, psychological uncertainty in yeah. wanting to travel. People yeah. might be unsure whether this is the right time. How how are you going to be addressing that? I can imagine lots of people probably don't want to get on uh, an airplane at the moment, even after the MCO is lifted. Well, um, this is human nature. They have been locked for so long. Surely there will be people who really want to go out there and travel. But they are not going to tra travel like before. They don't want to travel in a big group. They will be traveling like with families, you know, they will be traveling with friends, just a few friends. And they do not want to travel with many people around. They want to make sure that the places, the public places are clean. That's why, as the tourism, those in the, in the tourism industry, they must try to look into something that will build the confidence of the people to go over. So, what are the things? What are the factors that you can, uh, they can pull that which becomes pulling factors for people to come to a certain kind of um, um, destination for them to 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 um, to visit. So, uh, these are all factors that we want to make sure that everybody now will have this habit, a very uh, clean and hygienic habit that they will be complying with, that will build the confidence among the people. Among the, even among like Sarawakians going to Semenanjung, Semenanjung going to Sarawak, it's the same thing, it's, it's the, the same thing that we want to look for. But people will still want to travel after that. Dr. Sri, in the last few minutes that we have, yeah. could you help us understand what are the biggest challenges for you, the minister, uh, with your portfolio, considering uh, you know, a, a real downturn in uh, revenues for government in, in the foreseeable future, not just from oil and such, but also from the tourism industry. Uh, revenues there go were going to, and the tax revenues will be very limited. Uh, yeah. How are you going to, what are the main challenges do you think uh, you're going to have to deal with? Actually, that question is really something that is very close to my heart because it, we are talking about people who will be um, deprived from, from earning so much before this and suddenly a lot of them will be unemployed, a lot of them will be, I mean, the families are affected. So, um, therefore, we want all the industries to work together with us in MOTEC so that we can work something out for, you know, we can discuss on the effective solutions. We have been discussing, yesterday I was with the uh, state excos from the whole country and um, they were suggesting something for for us to help those in the industry so therefore it is very good for us to work closely together and we will be bringing this up to the government the the the, the federal government for us to discuss further what else can we do because it is really our concern but it is our i mean i think this is the time for us to work together we rebuild this economy together we save malaysia together it is, um, we have a common enemy. Our common enemy is this COVID-19. And let us all fight this economy, uh, ec um, enemy together. Then we work hard to, to um, rebuild our economy together to save that, Malaysia. Dr. Sri, thank mm -hmm. you so much for your time and being on the show with us tonight. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have on this episode of Consider This. I'm Melissa Idris with me, Sharad Kitten, signing off for the evening. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great weekend, folks, and good night. Mm -hmm.